Okay, so hello everyone. Good evening. So today we are gonna discuss about floats. This is the chapter in class 11th, and we are gonna do a quick revision of it. This is part one. In this, we will cover up to the topic viscosity. So let's start. So first of all, the term defined in floats is pressure. So what exactly is pressure? So pressure is also denoted by P. and this is force per unit area or f over a where f is the applied force and a is the area on which the force is applied like if we uh, take an irregular block then uh, let us make it a rectangular irregular block and let us apply pressure a force here and a force here then we will see let us assume this Area is one meter square, and this area is ten meter square, and both of the forces are equal and equal to ten newton. So the pressure in the first case, where this is applied on the side, would be force over area or ten over one, that is equal to ten pascal, and pascal is the unit of pressure. And if we look on this side, then the pressure would be Ten over ten, or one pascal. Okay. So who uh, this pascal unit was derived or uh, from a name of a person named Pascal. What he did was he created a law about which we are going to study later. Okay. So this stated that if we take a container. That uh, has uh, let us see this container. And in this container, what we have is fluid, any fluid. And uh, the fluid is filled up to a high edge. Then we can say that the pressure that is gonna be applied on the lowermost part of the vessel. would be rho g h where rho is the density of the liquid this density of the liquid may vary on the type of the liquid where and g is the gravitational field of the planet in this case on earth it is 10 meter per second square or 9.8 meter per second square the h is the height up to which the vessel is filled and uh, the amazing thing of this pascal's law of pressure is that if we take irregular objects like uh, let us take a uh, a uh, slanted let us take a slanted vessel but if in this slanted vessel the water or the fluid is filled up to a height same h then we can say that the pressure would be same and this may work for any irregular shape uh, no matter how wide the container is or any strange shape like this too in this case the pressure on the bottom most point will also be rho g h if height is same okay so this comes up to a conclusion or a paradox in which if we assume three vessels of different shape like this or like this and like this where all of them are filled with fluid Up to a height edge, same height, and then if I ask you, what uh, in which of the container most mass of the fluid is present, or which of the containers fluid weigh the most, and uh, assuming the vessel have the same mass in all three cases. So, if you have not study fluid, you will say this thing, this container, because in this container. the fluid present is more 
but if you have studied fluid and it is given that all of these three uh, areas are equal contact areas then you would say that the pressure would be same in each case that means all three of them will have the same weight of mass but actually this is not true okay and uh, the logical thing is that there are more fluid is present in this case and the mathematical or physical significance or the physics meaning is that in this case fluid will also be pressing down on this side in this case it would be pressing down on this side and if it, in this case it would be pressing down on this side and even if you are given that they have same contact areas and uh, same height of the fluid then you will see that these things if we resolve them to vectors we will see that this would have a, a left and right component and a down component and this thing would get cancelled uh, in all of the cases due to symmetry and we can see that much more force is pressed down with these geometrical uh, you can say geometrical vessel and because of geometry some more force is also applied on these walls which will make it mass much much more bigger and in this case there is no horizontal or vertical component so these will get cancelled out in this case we will just get the opposite things like if this is resolved then we will get a, a vertical component and a left and right component which would get cancelled due to symmetry symmetrical vessel so we can say a b and c so the final conclusion would be that mass of a is greater than mass of b is greater than mass of c okay so now hydrostatic paradox is also solved so now if we look at pascal's law what is pascal's law the pascal law just says that uh, the pressure applied to an enclosed incompressible fluid is transmitted undiminishedly to all points equally in all direction so this would have a physical significance of a uh, hydraulic lift which we will study a just bit later and we can also say that if there is no gravity or no force on the fluid pressure in all of the uh, any points three points uh, at different heights the pressure would be same in three all three cases a b c uh, no gravity then we can say that p of a is equal to p of b is equal to p of c and uh, no height or uh, no height is used okay so this pascal law also comes uh, with a derivation of the atmospheric pressure because atmosphere is made up of gas which is also a fluid so a fluid is anything which is liquid or a gas so the atmosphere is made up of gas and it is present on earth so assuming this is earth there is a huge column of air over it okay it has a lot of air and we are just going to do a rough estimate assuming that the atmosphere density does not changes with height which is uh, true in uh, the real world and we are going to assume that the atmosphere is roughly 15 km high and the density of the atmosphere we are just going to take it as a uh, 1 kg per meter cube 1 kg per meter cube okay now what we are going to do we are going to apply the formula same for liquids that this is the lower most point so pressure at that point would be rho gh and assuming g to be uh, 9.8 
we will get uh, 1 kg into meter cube 9.8 and height is 15 so we would get it roughly 1.01 into 10 to the power 5 Pascal which is defined as 1 atm or 1 atmospheric pressure and the liquid is incompressible like water but uh, the air can be compressed and due to gravity uh, the air would be compressed and density be, uh, will be a little bit more and the height would be a little bit less and we are gonna ignore that okay so after that what we are gonna think of it is if the pressure transfers undiminishedly and equally in all areas then how can we utilize it so we can utilize it with the concept of hydraulic lift so if we apply a force here f1 then we will get an output f2 here and uh, what we are just gonna observe is that if this f1 is very small this f2 would be very large okay because say this is a very less amount of fluid here and this is a very lots lot of amount of fluid and we have said that the pressure would transfer undiminishedly in all direction that means the pressure sent from here would go through all of this fluid and come out in this big area which would result in a much larger force but if okay let us drive it to so we can see the pressure here is P0 removing this piston and uh, the output here uh, is uh, also P0 removing this car so we can say P0 plus P1 is equal to P2 plus P0 because the pressure is transferred all over here so after that uh, what we can do is cancel P not from both sides where P0 is the atmospheric pressure so cancelling P0 from both sides we will have P1 is equal to P2 okay and we also know the pressure is force over area so F1 over A1 is equal to F2 over A2 and from here we can say F2 is equal to A2 over A1 times F1 and we know that uh, let us assume that uh, the A2 is 10 meter square and A1 is 1 meter square to just show you how powerful the force could be so if this is 10 over 1 or simply 10 so F2 would be 10 times F1 which is a very big force and with this much force you can say this is the violation of conservation of energy or conservation of force or conservation of mass any conservation but the side effect of this is that if we move it let us say 10 meter down okay 10 meter then this would only go up by 1 meter okay so what uh, you have seen in jacks of car is that you would have seen jacks of car where the uh, what we said the uh, in this case in the jack of the cars we will uh, we would see that uh, the air could be uh, given back by the air atmosphere so if we just push it then we will have to uh, the it will come up again and then we will have to push it again okay so after that we have the concept of a barometer so what we are gonna study here is a mercury barometer and there is also a torsilis bar it is also called torsilis barometer okay so what this barometer states is that how to make it so as the name suggests it is made up of mercury so first of all what we are gonna do we are gonna take a container and fill it with mercury which is also called hg in chemistry okay and now what we are gonna do we are just gonna take a funnel 
say I'm gonna do three steps in the same figure so if you just take this funnel what you are gonna do you are gonna put it in this vessel in, and then just remove all of the air in it uh, so that we will be left with vacuum and then what we are gonna do we are gonna suck it up in such a way that uh, the barrel uh, the what do we, uh, the test tube does not come out and uh, this mercury will rise up in the fluid because of atmospheric pressure going down here and going down here would just cause the mercury to rise up in the funnel okay so let us derive what would be the height of this uh, this because we know the atmospheric pressure so if we take a look at this a point and c point and a b point we can say p of a is equal to p of b because they are at the same height and also there is one more condition and the condition is that if we take a system of fluids like this in which we just uh, put fluids of different densities I'm gonna make them with different colors so this is row 1 and uh, this is row uh, second fluid with row 2 density 2 then we can say is that P of A okay, let's name the points B A B C D and we have seen that uh, this thing is uh, more towards the green side which is the density of the green liquid is less so this is H1 okay and uh, the second height is h2 okay so what we see here is that p of a is equal to atmospheric pressure p of b is equal to p of c and uh, p of c minus rho 2 g h2 is equal to p of d where D is somewhere about here okay this is E so P of E also is equal to P A T M and P D minus rho G H3 is equal to P of E this is just applying the Pascal's law for different points and P of E plus rho G uh, rho 2 G H3 is equal to P of D okay just ignore all of this because if you cannot understand then it is not useful at all what we are just gonna say for you is that uh, pressure would be same if the height of the fluid is same in both of the cases okay and we can make a path through the fluid to the object okay so if they are at the same height uh, and uh, the points are on the same height then we cannot say the pressure is equal if they can uh, the we cannot be made through the fluid okay So, like in the previous case, we could not say that uh, if we just fill it with two different fluids, we cannot say that uh, if a point is here and if a point is here, they are at the same heights. But we cannot make a point, uh, make a path through the fluid. This would be the path through the fluid and this is not present and also if we want to make a path through here then we would see that the density would change and that would not be the correct path okay so coming back to the barometer concept mercury barometer we can say that p of a is equal to p of b because we can make a path through the water or the fluid or the mercury so with this small help we can say is that what a pressure is so 
now we can easily say that if the pressure is same and we also know that p of a is equal to p atm and p of c equal to zero because we made a vacuum by removing all of the air from the test tube and now we can say that p of b would also be equal to p atm which would result in saying that if we want to go from p of c to p of b we can reduce this problem into a simple problem where we have b here and c here and this height is h that we need to calculate we know the density of mercury to be 13.6 kg per meter uh, okay and uh, we also know the gravitational acceleration g so this would be same as saying if you want to go from c to b then add the pressure so p of c plus rho g h is equal to p of b so from here we can see p of c is equal to zero so rho g h is equal to p of b which is equal to p atm now substituting the value and calculating h h is equal to 1.01 into 10 to the power 5 divided by 13.6 which is the density into 10 assuming g to be 10 here also 10 to the power 3 okay because this is 13.6 into 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube so what we can easily see is that h would be equal to 0 0.76 meter which is equal to 76 centimeter okay so now the most common question that arises in this case is why don't we use water instead of mercury because water is much more cheaper than mercury so the answer to that question lies in a simple calculation that we are just gonna use the density of water instead of mercury in this case and then we are gonna see what will happen so height would be same but for water hw would be 1.01 into 10 to the power 5 divided by 10 to the power 3 into 10 so now we can see that the height of water would be nearly 10.1 meter which is too much and too big to carry and too big to manufacture okay so now what we are gonna do we are uh, you can say a brother of barometer which is manometer but the little bit difference is that this is valid only for gases so if we just uh, take a look at such a structure which is a closed structure and uh, what we are gonna do we are gonna put a gas here here it is vacuum and also there is a point B in this liquid which is from the height H and we have filled our fluid okay this point is atmosphere this is atmosphere so what we are gonna do we are not gonna take it as closed but as an open container here so we would have a gas here and the fluid will rise to a certain level where after that the gas would block its way as the gas also need the pressure to sustain so a pressure atm would be acting on this point which means that if this is a point b then we can say that p of b this point is b let's name it c okay and let's name this point A up to which this fluid can go up to maximum height and we know that 
p of a is equal to p of b because they are at the same level and we can make a path to the fluid after that we can say that p of atm plus rho g h is equal to p of b is equal to p of a from here we can say that p of a is also equal to p of gas so finally we will have p of uh, p atm plus rho g h is equal to p of gas okay so after this thing what we are going to look at is fluids okay so flows a little bit different thing which are come in different types of variety so there are only two variety first one is called laminar the second one is called turbulent and uh, the laminar flows is also known as streamlined and the amazing property of this streamlined flow is that when you look at them they will look like as if no fluid is flowing and this is a stationary fluid so like in this case this fluid is uh, flowing in a laminar way or streamlined way and this is called laminar flow in this case we can see after some time the same structure would be visible and you can try it at home at old tabs and uh, in this case we can also see this flow is streamlined as we can see a clear line of water a crystalline water and the flow is laminar because also no turbulence or no disturbance is caused in this case you can see there are many direction in which the water is going and this is not stable as well the same in this case so these both are turbulent flows so there are three properties that streamline flow follows if there is a mass m1 and it go follows this path then if another m2 mass is going to come at the position of m1 mass it is also going to flow in the and follow the same path the second property that it follows is that if the velocity at this point is va when this mass would arrive there then its velocity will also be va okay so now also there are uh, there cannot be two directions of flow of a given mass okay so we can say streamlines can never cut each other okay if they do it then this is called turbulent flow like in this case we can see many flows going in different direction and cutting each other and causing turbulent flow okay and at any point the direction of movement is given by the tangent to the streamline and sometimes this streamline word is also called steady flow Okay. So after that, we are gonna look at the equation of continuity, which is only valid for streamlined flow and steady flows. Okay. So in this case, what we are gonna see is that if a volume of fluid flows from one area to another area, in which the areas change, what do we know that there is no storage of fluid? which means the fluid going in is equal to the fluid going out so m1 is equal to m2 if this is m1 and this is m2 and we know that mass is density times volume so we can write this rho1 volume one is equal to rho2 volume 2 from here we are going to change the volume into these radius into length so we can say rho1 a1 and length 1 l1 or delta x1 
is equal to rho two a two delta x two. From here, this thing can be written as rho one a one b one and b, which is the velocity. And we know that velocity is equal to delta x over delta t. So what we are going to do secretly is divide by t and multiply by t. So this thing can be written as v1 t is equal to rho 2 a 2 v 2 t. In this case, t and t gets cancelled, and the remaining equation is also called the equation of continuity. Okay. So, if the density of the fluid is same in both of the cases, we can rewrite this equation into a simpler version as rho uh, rho a one v one equal to rho a two v two, and the rho get cancelled, and we get a one v one equal to a two v two. This is a very useful equation in the fluid dynamics. Where dynamics, fluid dynamics is the study of fluid in motion. Okay, so after this, we get Bernoulli's equation or Bernoulli's theorem or Bernoulli's principle. Okay, before that, this is an advanced concept for equation of continuity, where the cross sections will divide into different parts. So in this case, if this fluid is going with velocity v1. Then these two string lines will have fluid with going velocities v a and v b, and the area is a one, the area is a a and a b. In this case, a one v one would be equal to a a v a plus a b v b. Okay, and this would be useful. In many competitive exams and some questions. Okay, so after that we will go to Bernoulli's principle, which is a derivation and uh, will only be defined for streamline and steady flow. For this, we are going to assume that it's a fluid uh, particle with mass m1. Length dx1, area a1, area a1, and the density rho1. Okay, know this part. To this part, which is mass m2, length x2, area a2. And L two in this case it is L one and row two from like this. So we can say what we are gonna do. We are gonna use work energy theorem, which states that total work done is equal to change in kinetic energy. Okay. So first, let's apply that. So we will have work done is equal to delta kinetic energy, change in kinetic energy, where this is due to the pressure force. Plus the work done due to gravity, and changes kinetic energy is delta k. And we know that the work done due to pressure and uh, pressure force is f1 x1 minus f2 x2 plus minus m2 g. H two minus m one g h one is equal to half m one v one square 
minus half m two v two square. So after that we are gonna use continuity equation and assuming that the fluid has the same velocity. Okay, we will have uh, v1, v1 equal to a2, v2. And after that, what we are gonna do? We are just gonna simplify this thing in such a way that we can write p1. P1 x1 minus P2 A2 x2 changing the value uh, uh, we expanding the volume mg h2 minus mg h1 is equal to taking half common Don't get confused with the volume V and velocity V. Okay, so we can write this thing here. Rewriting this thing as P1 V minus P2 V minus MGH2 plus MGH1 is equal to half M V2 square minus uh, minus M taking M common to so half V2 uh, minus V1 square okay so now what we are gonna do we are gonna divide this whole equation by V or the volume so dividing this whole equation by volume we will be left with a new form of the equation in which we will get P1 minus P2 minus rho G H2 plus rho G H1 is equal to half rho v2 square minus half rho v1 square and rearranging the things we will have very amazing thing which is rearranging the terms in such a way that the same times uh, same types of things are on the same side we will get P1 plus rho g h1 plus half rho v1 square is equal to P2 plus rho g h2 plus half rho v2 square which is also equal to a constant. Okay. So this equation tells us that pressure and velocity are inversely related and we are gonna look at some of its applications okay so uh, the applications are the speed of a flux the venturi meter which we are gonna look a little bit later and then our uh, lift of aeroplane and Magnus effect. So we are gonna look at the lift of aeroplane first. So if we look at a close look at an aeroplane wing, it would be something like this. And it is in such a way that the air, if the air comes with this thing, the air would get deflected and 
it is designed in such a way that the air pressure would be this that this velocity would be greater than the lower velocity so v high is greater than v low which would uh, say that p2 is less than p1 because both of them are inversely related okay also we can say that there would be a net p1 force which would force the airplane to go up or oh, go up the next example is of a cyclone let's look at inside this house so if we look at a close look at inside the house we would see that if the doors are closed then if cyclone is blowing or in wind then the air would go which would push down on the roof with p2 and inside p1 and velocity of air inside is v1 and the velocity of air outside the house is v2 and we know that v1 is less than v2 because we are does not blow fast inside the house so we can see that p1 is greater than p2 or this force inside the house the pressure of the air inside the house just blows away the roof of the house and it is not the air that blows the roof and it is the roof or the house which blows the air and the roof off so next example is of a heart attack in which uh, if we take a look at an artery a close up view when a heart at a heart attack occurs before that we can see that uh, due to some reasons the blood clotting occurs in which the area cross section area of this thing is much less so we can say v1 or the velocity of uh, artery in this case would be more velocity of blood in the artery and uh, the velocity of blood outside the artery would be v2 okay so what we can see is that if v1 is greater than v2 because of area of uh, equation of continuity which is that less the area more will the be the velocity we can say that p1 would be less than p2 because the pressure is less we can say that p in or p1 would be very high and this would just signal the alarm uh, and alarm the heart to push more blood which will make a chain reaction and cause heart attack if we look at an atomizer so in the atomizer this pressure is very low Okay, this is made in such a way that this pressure is very low. Okay, so from here, the water moves up because this is a suction chamber, and we know that P one is greater than P two, so V one would be less than V two. or simply the liquid will move up and go through this part in the output chamber where it would be break down into small droplets and would come out if we look at an example of the football this also causes something called as the magnus effect and this is called sideways movement of ball and this is used in cricket ball in uh, when the baller tries to spin the ball so this is made in such a way that half of the ball is rough and half of the ball is smooth and the pressure of the air would come from both of the sides so what we would observe is that the pressure would be different from both of the sides with this p1 this p2 because the ball has an initial velocity this pressure difference will be caused due to the change in velocity because if this is v1 we know that uh, if the ball is spinning 
this direction then v2 would be less uh, greater than v1 and then will cause due to this change in pressure there will be a deflection and it will be deflected So now let us look at uh, the efflux velocity. So for this efflux velocity, what we are gonna do? We are gonna make a container in such a way that uh, this area of cross section is very small and is uh, nearly on the ground. We are just gonna not assume that it has any height and this cross section is very big in this comparison and uh, the above part is uh, open. So from here let's label a few things. We can say that the fluid will flow out with V velocity which we need to calculate V E ok and let us assume the height of the fluid to be H and the density to be rho and this area would be A1 this area would be A2 ok so now what we are going to do we are going to apply two famous equations first continuity and second Bernoulli so Bernoulli equation would say P1 plus rho g h1 plus rho uh, half rho v1 square is equal to p2 plus rho g h2 plus half rho v2 square from here we can say that this p plus rho g h plus half rho v1 square is equal to p atm plus 0 because there is no height so this height is equal to 0 plus half rho v2 square from here this will be used in equation of continuity applying equation of continuity a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 from here we can say v1 is equal to a2 over a1 v1 and uh, what I said that this cross section area would be nearly zero because you know that this cross section is very small in comparison to this one so we can say that v1 is nearly equal to zero okay. so if v1 is nearly equal to zero what we are gonna do we are gonna substitute it in this case and we will have p plus rho gh is equal to P A T M plus half rho V two square or V E square. Okay. So from here we are gonna find the value of V E as V E is equal to root two rho g h plus p minus p atm over rho ok and assuming that the container is open uh, see this equation will be useful in all cases and can be used anywhere but now if we assume that the container is open on the top side then we would know that the P would be equal to P ATM and approximate version or uh, the uh, you can say a uh, less useful version would be V is equal to root 2 GH if we know that the container is open so this thing will only be used when the container is open on the top side okay so after that what we are gonna do is we are just gonna look at venturi meter so this venturi meter 
barometer and manometer in this barometer what we are going to see is a fluid flows in this shape okay what we are going to we are just going to take some fluid and just make a cross section here and here from here we can say e1 v1 e2 v2 p2 p1 okay and this fluid is flowing this is called dynamic case or the fluid is not static And this fluid is different from the fluid used in this thing and okay so it would be something like this okay and cool thing about this is that in three dimension this would be at the same height so this height h would be same as this height h okay so now we are going to fill this thing with a different kind of fluid and we know due to bernoulli's principle because the velocity here is high then we are going to see that the pressure here would be low we should just suck this fluid towards this side okay so static case formula for pressure would be p equal to rho g h this was uh, i taught you but this would not be useful if this is a dynamic case or flowing case cannot be used here so applying bernoulli's principle here we will get p1 plus rho g h plus half rho v1 square is equal to p2 plus rho g h plus half rho v square in this case rho g h and rho g h will get cancelled and we will be left with p1 minus p2 is equal to 1 over 2 rho v2 square minus v1 square and now substituting uh, okay so now let us use equation of continuity in this case the equation of continuity we are going to substitute p1 minus p2 so a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 assuming same density of the fluid from here we know v1 is equal to a2 over a1 v okay so now we know that p1 minus p2 is also equal to rho g h rho m g h okay so substituting the value we will get rho m g h so rho m g h is equal to half rho v taking rho common v2 square minus a 2 over a1 v 2 square okay substituting this value in this equation okay so this let us name it equation 1 equation 2 substituting equation 2's v1 in equation 1 okay so from here we can say that v2 is equal to root under very big thing 2 rho m g h we are rho m is the density of this fluid this is static because the velocity is constant so rho 1 minus 
a2 over a1 also okay so now this is the final equation of the venturi meter what is its use it measures flow of water or any liquid okay so in this narrow region velocity be more velocity would be more because the area of cross section is less okay so now after this we have covered the application of bernoulli equation okay and after this thing i would just thank you for watching this whole video okay so now thank you and meet you soon in another video till the time let us look at a good demonstration okay so now we are going to look at a demonstration of fluids okay